TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Oh, we are live. I'm I'm bugging. I'm gonna edit that out. Um, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. The warning screen. Just in case, you know. Don't forget twitch.com is where you can catch the live streams, man. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. We also got a Patreon where we post five days per week. Get me. Also, this is Can't Pay Will Take It Away Season 5, Episode 19. Talk to me for one second. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for... Mm, that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna edit all of this out. Don't worry about it. Y'all not even gonna see none of this. There we go. <laughs> Recent research has shown that falling incomes, coupled with rising childcare costs, have left six million working families struggling to make ends meet. Over two thirds of these families have no money left each month to put aside in savings, leaving them at risk of falling into debt. No lie, child care is crazy. 2.4 million children in England and Wales live in families with debt or problems. With debt problems. W Reader. High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway are in Great Bar, Birmingham. Matt, brother, I understand it's sunny, but like, dude. The glasses is killing me right now. Oh my god. No more pausing on this. They're here to recover almost four and a half thousand pounds owed by a couple for unpaid nursery fees. Who's next on the hit list then, mate? Next on the list, mate, we've got a Mr. Wesley Regis and Miss Sirena Cooper. And they owe uh, just over four thousand pounds to children's nursery. It seems that Mr. Regis and Miss Cooper used to pay for their childcare regularly, but the couple have now fallen behind with their payments. Understandable. You know what I'm saying? See, now these are the cases where I could feel for them. Like, all right. That's another one of the most popular debt of the time. One a day so far, isn't it? Nursery fees? Yeah. The nursery escalated the case to the High Court, and now the debtors must pay the money they owe, in full, today. With no answer, Matt goes to check for another entrance. Finding the back door open, he makes peaceful entry. Hello. Hello there. How are you? Do you want to answer the front door, sweet? My colleague wants to speak to you. Yeah, can I just shut this? No, 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 that's fine. He's at the front door, he wants hey, to speak please. to you. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Okay, can I just shut this door then? There you go. Yeah, but no, okay. but can I shut this door, please? Yeah, you can, yeah, I'll come in and you can no, shut no, it. No, 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 I didn't ask you to come in. There you go, you don't need to ask me, sweet. <laughs> okay, can All right. you go to the front door then? Can I answer the front door? My colleague's yeah, there. I'm on my own, so I feel vulnerable right now. You're very safe, believe me. Okay. Hello. Morning, madam. You all right? Yeah. Miss Cooper, is it? Yeah. So, Miss Cooper, uh, yeah, that's Matthew, I'm Gary. We're yeah. here to recover £4,342.58. Well, I've got five children to um, look after. I've not had no notification whatsoever. No. What about Wesley? He's not here at the moment. He's not here. Do you want to give him a ring and see if he can pay it? He's got nothing in his pocket either. Okay. He's, so, he's a self employed. Um, the writ commands us to attend the property today to seize goods to the value of. Do you understand that? Yeah, I do. Okay, understand that's what that. we're here to do. I, I do right. understand that. Is there well, anybody who can help you with this? No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, we're by ourselves. With payment looking unlikely, Matt's look. Give me you the answer straight up. Like, I don't got it. It is what it is. Look around. Ain't nothing much here around the house for any assets they could seize to offset the debt. While Gary tries to find out more about how the couple got themselves into this situation. So why wasn't it paid at the time, the nursery fees? It was paid at the time, but yeah. obviously, um, I lost my job, so obviously we fell into arrears. Um, she did stop my son from going to nursery, then I had to go and get somebody else to look after it. So obviously, you know, 
Money's changed. See, at this point, I don't feel bad. No, I felt bad before, but it's just not adding up. You you both work. This is a two-parent household. One person goes to work. Both of y'all went to work. You got fired. You seen the downward trajectory, but you decided to leave your children in the daycare? When you were at home not working, just watch your kids. I understand it, though. I get it as a parent. No, we don't want to do that. Put the kids in daycare, even though I'm home. Uh, I get it. But, you know, for the sake of money and not being in debt. Just had to go and get somebody else to look after it. So obviously, you know, money just didn't. Just for the one child, is it? Um, yeah. There's nothing that I can do. I'm, I'm telling you now, I, I'm brassing myself. I do work, but there is nobody. What about Wesley? You got it. That's what that stands for, Brassic. So like the show Brassic, I never knew. I just thought it was a random made up word. Else to ask. There is nobody. There is nobody. There is nobody. We meet people on a daily basis who are struggling, you know, just to just to put a meal inside, you know, inside the be the bellies every day. We do feel for them, um, but on the other hand, you know, we are. We are working for a person who's owed an amount of money. The agents have now been in the house for 20 minutes when Serena's partner, Wesley, yes. arrives. Right, come on, Wesley, let's come have a chat, mate. And he wants answers. How did you get round the back and come through the back door? They pushed I, opened, the gate. I opened the gate and walked in through the back door. They pushed it. Right. We have had no contact. None whatsoever we sent, from we sent yourselves. This, we sent this letter. No, no we've not had we none. Well, we I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you never, something. I'll I'm tell you what I have received. You never, no, the you only never. people that I've received something from are these people here. No, 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 so. no, I know it has got nothing to do with them. That's council tax. Yeah, yeah. that's council tax. So we've had nothing from you. Yeah, we've had nothing. Letter has been sent. We've not had no letters, nothing. You need to have a chat with or Royal Mail. Despite the fact that notice has been sent from the claimant, the county court and the high court enforcement company, Wesley won't accept the authority of the agents and calls the police. Um, yeah, I do owe money, but not to these people. They've sent stuff and there's nothing still sent. And right now, it might get physical. No, it's not going to get physical. Wesley, let's don't, not start don't that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Threats, shouting, dancing up and down all that he just said though they sent stuff but haven't since they literally are right. done a ritual dance it doesn't bother me one bit we've seen it every day of the week it isn't going to change anything it just makes things harder for the defendant <coughs> we're not going to say well because you've raised your voice or called me a name we're going to go away that's never going to happen so it's, it's just pointless 10 minutes later the police arrive i tell you what the problem is, officer. What's going on? These lot are supposed to have supplied us a letter to try and say that it's going to notice for intent, um, enforcement. Uh, we've not received no correspondence. With Wesley insisting he hasn't received notification of the enforcement, Matt tries to break the stalemate and looks through a pile of paperwork. Oh, and I give that back, Wesley. And now I've got people going through my... Excuse me, don't, don't go through my... Please, please, please. Oh, seriously, seriously, I don't want you to get arrested, so please just, just stop. Listen, you know what's happened, really and truly? The woman that owns the nursery, right, yeah. has also applied their fees on top of the thing there, so she's just adding more money on yeah. it. The original debt is only £1,600. Right. So how it's reached the four thousand pounds? Right. It's just her adding more, adding more, adding more. The Wesley, Wesley, court fees. No, no, I'm not. I'm not shouting at you, am I? I'm not. No, I'm gonna be like this because it's my freaking right. life, mate. You carry on, mate. What do you think? Or are you You're gonna... asking me to calm down, right? And the whole point where I'm, I'm getting cheesed off about. You're asking for money, and I told you you can't raise your voice. You can get. How much time do you have to hear it? Do you know what I'm saying? You can get it's cheesed off as you like. No, do you need me to leave my temper? Do you need me to leave my temper? You're gonna get arrested, then, aren't you? You're gonna get arrested, then, aren't you? Ask yourself. 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 No, but he's, 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 I ain't gonna lie, Wesley got a solid point. What you mean, bring it down, brother? This is my life. I'm fighting for my life. And you out here asking me to bring it down. Who is losing control? Now, right now, you're just 
With Wesley at risk of arrest, Matt and Gary will have to use all their tenacity to get this case resolved. To appease the part to make weather it. That have every right to be in the house. I have an address that they're ordered. Right, as far as they're concerned, they've followed their procedures through. If they have an address that they're ordered to check by the court, then that's where they will go, okay? Yeah, but, but listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a dispute right about now, and they can't prove it. So, how do we resolve this here and now? That's what needs really to happen. Really, what needs to come on from here and now, right, is for these lot to come out of this address here, to go and follow their procedures, to get everything back in line, at the end of the day, I'm going right. to tell you where it is. But even with the police present, Wesley won't back down. Matt steps in. Let's, you let's move this along a little wrong. bit. We're going round and round in circles. Well, raise some money and let's see if we can get it resolved. I find the best way to deal with these situations is to keep as calm as possible. At the end um, of the day. It's very difficult to be angry with somebody that's not, that's not reflecting that anger back to you. Um, and it's a, it's a skill I learned many years ago um, in security. Uh, you know, the calmer you keep the situation, the better the outcome's going to be. Realising that the agents aren't going to go away, Wesley finally starts to cooperate. Yeah. You say that you'll get 500 quid today. I don't think that's going to well, be enough, well, mate. Put it towards them. It's okay. Like, no venture, no gain. Mm. Now, what the client would normally say is half the outstanding amount. That's not going to happen. Hey, though. Wesley is crazy. You well, can go to the creditors and say, look, they don't have much, but what we're willing to do is give you £500 now, make you go off your way, we can go and live our lives, sort out everything that we need to do. I'd love to. I'd love to get this resolved. But then the whole fact is, no venture, no gain. Okay. Well, is it how much, weekly or monthly, can we afford to offer the nursery? Just put me and get a one a week. One hundred a week. So four. So four hundred a month. All right. I'll give the office a call. Gary calls the office to see whether a five hundred pound down payment, together with a payment plan, is acceptable to the claimant. Hi, Gary. Hi. Uh, can you have a look at a case for us, mate? Yeah, it's Wesley Regis. Yep. That's right. Yeah, got an offer, mate. We've um, we've been here quite some time now. Um, the defendant, Wesley, is self-employed. Uh, the, the, the mother, the, um, she's got five kids. They're offering £500 a day. Okay, yeah. And £100 per week going forward. All right, buddy. Thanks, Lachlan. Cheers, Did they accept that? Oh, no, sir, sir. The claimant has been accepted. The offer. Yeah, that's the claimant has accepted the offer. Gary goes to tell Serena and Wesley the good news. Hey, Wesley was right. No venture, no gain. Got his future shot, you hear me? They've contacted the nursery. The nursery has come back with £500 will be accepted today. Will? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> don't contact us. No, no, not for, not for 500 <laughs> I think with any enforcement visit, we have that jumping up and down, the shouting and screaming. You know, it's testament to the fact that we don't take that personally, that very often we leave the enforcement visit um, on good terms, shaking hands, um, sometimes laughing and joking. We take no pleasure from upsetting people. We take no pleasure from, um, you know, leaving enemies left, right and centre. Um, but we'd much rather get the, get the matter dealt with and, and leave as friends. Wesley has paid the £500 and the agents get him to sign a controlled goods agreement. We've got a list of goods in the property that we're going to secure the debt against. Does that make sense so far, yeah? All right, so it's an agreement between you and us uh, and the claimant that you're going to pay the £100 a week going forward, OK? If Wesley doesn't stick to his repayment plan, any assets listed What's on the agreement on the will be seized. So I got off on the wrong foot, Wesley, but nice meeting you. Sorry about the circumstances. No, no, right, no, mate. No, I yeah. OK, right, thanks very much. It's been a good result for the agents. That's another day gone. That morning went quick, didn't it? In the UK, adults aged under 35 are coming under increasing financial pressure. In a recent study, almost 50% are concerned about their financial future, and over a quarter of young adults admit that they've never learned to manage their money. 
More than 2 million UK adults aged between 25 and 34 are struggling with debt. W Reader, once again. 6 a.m. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Droylsden, Manchester. Beautiful day. They're on their way to recover a debt of just over £1,500, owed by Katie Allen for unpaid parking fines. Can you enlighten me on where we're going? We are going to visit a Miss Katie Allen. She's got an outstanding balance of £1,691. Miss Allen received the fines after repeatedly leaving her car in the same car park without displaying a ticket. Now the agents have a writ to collect payment in full or seize goods. I hope nobody's in the comments feeling bad for her because this is on her own doing. To offset far, the debt. We'll see. Hello? I'm after Katie. Katie? Yeah. I got enforcement. This is work. Right, are you able to get her on the phone? Uh, are you able to go up? That's the Spanish Right, okay. Katie! Katie! Where is she? She's just left for work, honestly. Right, Can right. Tell me about her. No, oh. we need to speak to her. Let's so you need to try and get her on the phone. Someone needs to ring her. Miss Allen received the fines after repeatedly leaving her car in the same car park I'm going to without displaying a ticket. Go upstairs and get dressed if you want, it's not a problem. We'll go in, we'll go in there. Okay. There we go. Hiya, Katie is it? Yes. Hi Katie, we're High Court Enforcement Agents from Dark Collection Bailiffs Limited. Um, it's regarding uh, an outstanding balance, Katie. Yeah, so what's happened about well, this Katie payment? Know what's up. You have had a letter about it. Mm -hmm. And I got a letter the other week, so my dad said ring it, but yeah. I got paid Right, well, you need to see what you can do to try and raise some funds now because we're here now to take control of goods and last the balance is paying. 1,691 and 71 pence. Let's see what you can do to try and pay it today. Well, I haven't got a pay to pay. No. I haven't got any money. I'm just. One thousand six hundred and ninety-one pounds. For it's parking. It looks like parking. Yeah, parking. Parking fine. It's like people come on the chat just to get banned. They see what they can say. Like, how long? I wonder how long it'll take me to just chat some stuff so I can get banned. I applaud the energy. That's real energy. Hmm. <laughs> Sake. It's clear that Katie's mother was unaware of her daughter's situation. Stuart tries to find out more about how the debt arose. Where is the parking from? Just outside where we used to work. Yeah. We used to go out on a Friday, but there was no option to pay after 12. Yeah. Just go every Saturday morning and have a ticket. Yeah. So you would continue to get tickets every Friday. Like, that's stupid. I don't know why the younger generation think it's fine to run up debt and and not to pay it. I mean, if this is the way we're heading. Yeah, we don't feel bad for you, Katie. I'm sorry. You knew what you was doing and you did it at your and you continue to do it. I think society's in for a big surprise. I was brought up that if you have debt, you pay it. Uh, you pay your debts first, actually and whatever's left over is then for you to spend. Uh, but that seems to have gone out the window. The agents have been in the house for 15 minutes. Katie hasn't made an offer of payment, and now the whole family is getting involved. Simple, but he did in the sand. I'm not burying the head in the sand, Dad. Am I? Yes. I've had one letter which was two weeks ago. I've not had any money since. And you just ignore Yeah, it's no point that. ringing and saying I've got no money. That would be about 150 quid parking fine. It's about seven, eight hundred quid now. There's nothing I can do about it. What do you, what do you clear? Well, you could have you paid it initially. 
not let it get so high, you know, or think about this. You could have not parked there after the first time. Oh man, I got a ticket. Let me not park here anymore. You know what I'm saying? Just, it's a lot of logical stuff you could have done. What do you take home? What do I? What, what, what do you take home? I take off? about just under 1200 home, but I've got direct debit. Plus, you know everybody. Don't know everybody at all. Why are you at? Young damn. Apart from you used to. Well, I've got no dosh. I never did. What can you do about it, Dad? I can't magic money. It's not nice doing this. No. I know it's not, Mum. I don't even know what I to say. I don't one penny me in my life. Ever. Mom got that haircut where I tell what I tell y'all about the short haircut that mom got, that means you either handle business or you know what I'm saying, you aggressive. And in this case, she handles business. Well look here. Stop looking me at you. I can find. And it's got to this amount of money. It's not two parking. Well how many is it? Couple of three parking tickets. Three parking tickets. Four. Maybe five. One thousand. 600 is that what it is now yeah i think the biggest problem with that is it doesn't care about your family it doesn't care about you it doesn't care the situation you got yourself into it can bring families together it can rip families apart but we are there to make them realize that it's either now or never they need to either raise payment or we'll have to take control of goods with tensions no growing in the family stuart needs to get this case resolved as quickly <coughs> as possible he turns his attention to Katie's car. Well, the vehicle will be seized, you see, so we'll have to take control of that as well. Have you got the keys for it? Yeah. Yeah, are we able to can we, uh, take control of them, wherever they are? You know I don't have reading pens. You know I don't have reading pens. I'll be honest, it's, we're seeing it quite a lot. At the moment. Yeah. No, no, we out of Katie is just like irresponsible. That's all, like. Yeah. yeah. She was literally supposed to start work at seven. You couldn't find her, which means she was about to be late for work. She was still in pajamas. Like, come on now. Different generation, isn't it? That's the thing. <laughs> Whereabouts is it? Is it on the front? Stuart goes out to check over Katie's car. I didn't expect her to give me the keys so easily, but why would you ignore a parking debt? She knows about this debt. She's ignored it. That's why we're here. She should have nipped it in the bud instead of ignoring it until we come on the door today. But and imagine the car that you're getting these parking tickets in not being enough to cover the debt of the parking tickets that you <laughs> like this time. That's how people deal with it, isn't it? They try and like hold their heads in the sand. And then when it comes face to face with them, they, they just can't deal with it. 110,000 miles. At auction, the car would cover about a quarter of the 1,500 pounds. A quarter? This car worth $350? Katie owes. But the prospect of seeing her daughter lose her car has prompted Katie's mum to act. I'll give you some. I can only give you my bill money that's coming out at the beginning of the month. How much could you realistically could you get today? About 800. Katie's mother has offered half the debt as a down payment, but the agents need to set up a payment plan to settle the balance. It'll have to be three hundred pounds a month. Three hundred. Yeah. Can you do that? Well, I'll have to do that. Then. Yeah. Katie now has three months to pay off the balance. But if she defaults, her car is at risk. What we'll do is we'll secure the goods so you can still keep your car and everything like that. But in three months, if it's not clear, then we will have to come back and we will remove it. Katie's mother makes the £800 down payment. 
there's your keys back anyway. At least you get you to work and everything like that. But now, with most of Katie's wages going toward paying off the debt, she may have to reassess her future. I've got going to Portugal in June and I'm going to have no spending money now. No. You might not be going to Portugal, are you? Get your priorities together. £300 a month. Uh, right. Alright guys, we'll leave you to it anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see, you. see you later, mate. Take it easy. How can you put that on your parents and then say, oh, I'm going on holiday in four weeks' time to Portugal. I've got no money for Portugal. But priorities is a bit wrong. You know what it is? It's the nerve. The nerve of her. The nerve of her to do that in front of her parents. That they, you know what I'm saying? She's more concerned about paying for holiday than paying a debt. And now her mom and dad has to pay it. The mind boggles. The mind boggles, and I just feel I feel really sorry for the parents because they shouldn't be they shouldn't be paying it. Yeah. Stuart and Vic have had to deal with a stressful family feud, but in Gary and Matt's next case, they meet. Ah, don't you dare! Let's just get to it. Has revealed. Research has revealed that more and more Britons are in denial about their debts. A third admit they can't face the reality of how much they owe. More than 40% realised they had a debt problem only after being pursued by creditors. Two-fifths of people lie about their debt because they feel ashamed or guilt. <laughs> It's 8.30 p.m. High Court Enforcement Agents Matt Highway and Gary Ball are in Dudley, West Midlands, seeking to recover £1,600 owed to a car hire company. Where's next then, mate? We're going to see uh, Mr. Maxud Ahmed. It's £1,676. 69 pence. But this isn't the first time the agents have tried to enforce this writ against Mr. Arnett. So this could get so negative. This is a third address for this chap. And we've been given the run around for about four weeks now. Hopefully finally we'll catch up with him and get this settled. This time the agents have come to a business address for Mr. Ahmed. It's a takeaway. And as it's peak trading hour, Matt and Gary are hoping to finally find him and get this case resolved once and for all. Hello, Hello there. How are you? Hi, mate. How you doing, mate? Uh, looking for uh, Mr. Maxud Ahmed. I'm Mr. Maxud Ahmed, yeah. High Court Enforcement Agent, sir. I'm Mr. Maxud Ahmed. Him. He's not here, no? But Gary has seen a photograph of the debtor and thinks he's spotted him. Go, Maxud Ahmed. Oh, there he is. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? Just to explain who I am again, I'm sure you already know. My name's Mr. Highway, sir. High Court Enforcement Aid. Yeah. Are you okay? So no we're, to, we're to collect. It, no, we can't go outside, no, sir. Okay. We're to collect a balance of 1,676.69, sir. Mm. I'll be honest with you, I want to pay. What happened was, who I was work for, mm. who I work for, he never paid me. He told me he's going to pay me on the 10th. Mm. I'm still working for him. Right. To work for him, yeah. and he's gonna pay me 14 in Japan, and yeah. I want to do it in one go anyway because yeah. I want to clear it up. I don't want to take the stress. Right. I'll be honest with you. I, got Why don't you make I hear a whole lot of excuses, and they're not even. You know what I'm saying? They're not even good excuses. What somebody else paying you got to do with you paying me? Nothing to me. Oh yeah, man. I'm just waiting for bro to pay me. I'm gonna pay you. I don't give a what. I don't care. That's, that's between you and him. I'm here for me and your business. Get the calls and get that organised now. Well, I can't organise from nowhere. All the stress will disappear then, won't it? I've got 80 quid in my bucket. That's it's not going to be enough, is it? You, you owe 16, don't you? With payments... Root beer light, bruv. Looking unlikely, the agent's only choice is to remove assets from the takeaway to offset the debt. Well, let me tell you what the situation is, OK? We're either going to be collecting... ...from the takeaway...
Fried chicken, kebabs, burgers, pizza. Way to offset the chicken sausage, chicken tiki masala, masala fish, kebabs, burgers, cod, meat, king, prawn, vegetables, samosas, sheet kebabs, flame grill, sauces, minced fries, tandoori. They got hey they hey they going crazy in there. The debt. Well, let me tell you what the situation is, okay? We're either going to be collecting payment or seizing goods to the value of. That's what we're, that's what we're to do. Yeah, I'm working here. There's a gaffer asking. Mr. Ahmed now claims that he's only an employee, and the man the agents first met owns the takeaway. Cap. But Gary is suspicious and looks around for any paperwork. Yeah, you don't have to help me, sir. You don't have to help me. But Mr. Ahmed is becoming agitated. No, you can't touch it as well. I can't touch anything in here, so yeah, no, I can. You can't touch it. Yeah, can. Yes, you can, sir. Oh, no. And it's a fence to obstruct him. If you obstruct him, I'll call police. Move I'll be back. Here. Move back now. No, you can't. Give yes, me like I can. That. You Move can't back. Give me like that. I'm Move standing back. here. Right. Don't let's stroke my colleague when he's doing his job. Yeah, all right? he's doing the job. No, but you can't give me the argument. I've, 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 I've no issue with you standing watching him. That's you can do that. That's that's your that's your prerogative. Oh, but okay. you're not obstructing him. But then Gary makes an important discovery. Gas bill? Not yours, no? Sorry? No. Nah. Do you pay the gas bill as a worker, do you? No. No, you don't? No. That, that, if you can check it out with the British gas, that's nothing to do with me. Well, it's got your <laughs> name on. Oh, I don't know. And it's got this address. Uh, 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 Ahmed. But you got, you got Trading gas mamas. <laughs> this you is mamas, yeah? The gas oh, bill is man. evidence that Mr. Ahmed does own the takeaway after all. Good. But he's not the backing worst down. Liar. You're not going to so, find anything at all on my What What we just have? It's got oh. in his hand there, look. Oh, that, 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 right. that's not proof as well. Well, it is. I'll tell you it what. is. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm not owning the that's, business. Oh, okay. Do you think Mr. Ahmed, sir, the burden of proof is not on us. It is to, for you to prove that any items in here that I take are yours and you'll have 14 business days. Until then, they'll be holding and after that, they will go into an auction block. And they will be sold, and the funds gained will go to the, it will be deducted from what you owe, and then a new bill will be there. Now, keep in mind, if we do take goods today, there will be an extra six hundred dollar fee for the removal trucks. Now, keep on playing with me, sir, because I got all day. I do this. Is what I was said. We were born yesterday. No, I, no. I think this I... is our first day on the job. Uh, that's right, I'm coming down. Okay, thank you. Okay. Quite often, you know, a defendant will, will use any excuse under the sun. And, and even when we show them completely irrefutable evidence that they are the person we're looking for and that we are in the right place, uh, they'll still deny it. Um, you know, it's, it's the last line of defence that they've got. We're there. You stood in your place, about to remove goods. The only thing he's got available to him is, it's not me. The agents have now been at the takeaway for half an hour. With the debtor, Mr. Ahmed, gone, and with evidence to show that... ...hour. Ain't them to-go boxes? Why are they on the floor? You see what I'm saying, man? You can't eat everywhere. With the debtor, Mr. Ahmed, gone, and with evidence to show that this is his business, the agent's only option is to remove goods in his absence. But Mr. Ahmed's colleague insists that he is the owner of the takeaway. He's not in the business. Yeah. If firing just eat now. Yeah. Firing uh, just eats, um, you know, the yeah. contractors. Yeah. Call They'll ask for my name yeah. and my bank details. And it's going to be mine. Why is he paying your electric bill then? Second. Why is he paying the electric bill for this place? Who's paying the electric bill? Novice paying Max, the bill. Max, Max, who is? He's not paying that bill. Why is his name on the bill then? I don't know. He hasn't paid that bill. Max, who Electric. Bill. It's not the electric bill. It's not the electric bill for this place. I don't know why he's why he's paying the bill. Okay. But you're the boss. W friend, man, you tried. You tried. The evidence is stacked tremendously. Strong against you. So this place on you? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. So you'd not obviously know that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Despite the man's protests, the agents continue their inventory. But then Mr. Ahmed returns. I've got no money at all. Right. 
Well, you, you need to kiss with a call that can help you then. Yeah, I, I tried. I've been to a couple of people now. I'll yeah. be honest with you, nobody right. got at the moment. Make the calls. Let's get this sorted. Let's get it done. Yeah, right. but I don't want to be organising a van. So I'm just going to go one place to see if I can yeah. arrange something up. Let's sort out before the bill goes up, before this business gets disrupted. Let you carry on what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, I just got our toys. Thank you, Maxi. It seems that the prospect of the business being put at risk has prompted Mr. Ahmed to try and raise some cash. The High Court writ tells me to go and seize the goods of the defendant. It puts us in a strong position. It, it puts us in that position of, um, you know, we've really got that bargaining tool there to say, well, we're here, we're here for the money. If we don't get the money, then we're going to be moving goods. Just over an hour later, Maxi. Mr. Ahmed comes back to the shop. Is that 500, yeah? It seems he's managed to raise some money after all. But is it enough? When's the rest of it going to get paid? I'm going to pay you on the 10th. You're going to pay the balance on the 10th? I can't pay you full balance on the 10th. Oh, right. Yeah. So 500 pound on the 10th, 676 on the 10th and the 5th. All the, all the Matt takes a £500 down payment and sets up a payment plan to offset the balance. Can I receive for that? No, that is your receipt. That is your receipt. So what was this for? What was the, what was the money for? So, there's a more dispute with them anyway. Yeah. I was renting the van from them. Yeah. The van hit on the shutter. You know that... So it was damaged access. to the van? No, no yeah. damage at all on no. the van. They charge, tried to charge me the access yeah. for the damage. Right. Which one the fucking no damage at all? Uh, okay. I'm gonna fucking deal with that bastard. Yeah. It's easy to say there's no damage when it's not your vehicle. When you're the person that gotta pay for it. No, but no, but no, no, you good. No, buddy. You take care, okay. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you. Good night, mate. Cheers. <laughs> well, results of sorts. The case is resolved for now. But if Mr. Ahmed defaults on his payments, the agents will be back. Yeah, I mean, it's just gone 11 o'clock now uh, in the evening. You know, we're not going to give up. We're not just going to, you know, walk in and, and then you know, when we're asked to leave, we're going to leave. We're going we're gonna to stay there till the bitter end. And before... Y'all outside real late, by the way. I meant to say that. Like, it, it's super late. Four hours later, we've, we've managed to get uh, some money out of him and, and an arrangement. So it's, it's fairly good in the end. The number of self-employed workers in the UK has risen by almost a quarter since 2008. Of course. And now stands at nearly 4.8 million. However, research has shown that over half of self-employed people owe, on average, 35% more in personal debt mm. than those who are in full-time employment. Nearly three in five self-employed people are struggling with debt. It's 7 a.m. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are on their way to Carnforth, Lancashire, <coughs> to recover almost three and a half thousand pounds owed by the owner of a garage. Who are we after, anyway? Chris Fernley. How much does Mr. Fernley owe? Three thousand four hundred and eighteen pounds. Mr. Fernley owes the money to a customer. He sold them a car, which was returned. Mr. Fernley then didn't pay them a refund. And it's part of the garage, isn't it? Button. Yeah, cause Mr. Fernley is bold, ain't he? Moon Motors. Button Moon Motors. It's a nice little industrial estate, though. It's not bad at all. Shall we park just before his unit and walk up the little street? Yeah, why not? So why don't we just park here? If Mr. Fernley can't or won't pay today, we'll the agents can seize assets from the garage, including vehicles, to offset the debt. There's, pl there's plenty of vehicles there, too. Hi, right, mate. Wow, who bought a car from here? Like, <laughs> what were you thinking? You all right? Rafty Chris. Rate control, mate, for £3,419. Well, still let people know when you were coming. Yeah, <coughs> yeah we have. Say notices. Yeah, a letter's been sent to us, we wouldn't be here, you see. No letters come 
Yeah, it's okay. Well, it doesn't change the situation that we're here today. The payment has to be made. Uh, Chris, we're here to remove goods. Simple as that, really. Taking 500 quid on me and that's it. It's going to have to be more than that, mate. We can obviously give you some time, like, to some raise some funds. Debit card or bank transfer would be the options. Or cash. Oh, well, that's two and a half grand this morning. If you'd have said something to mm. me. Yeah, well, I've been to pay me bill. Yeah. Get that well, you haven't paid this bill. So that's why we're here now. I owe him like that. Joe, he has no time for him. It might be too... Bro might not have had his coffee. He is not giving him no break. Mr. Fernley's £500 offer is not enough. So Vic sets a deadline. We can give you 20 minutes. If you want to ring around, see if someone can help you. I don't have any best mates around here. They I'm a loner. They don't have to be around no. here. Someone can make a payment over the phone. No, I don't know anybody at all. Okay, do. okay. With Mr. Fernley seemingly unable to increase his £500 offer, Stuart turns his attention to the white Astra parked outside. What about the vehicle? Wait. The, have you? Right, okay. Have you any documentation for it? I've done that. So, it looks like it's for repair. But Stuart is suspicious. He goes to search the car. <laughs> he finds a letter from the local city council addressed to the debtor. Yeah, Customer's car, but... That was in the glove box. With his dog and paperwork in the glove box. Yeah. I get it. I get it. This dude's a con artist, apparently. Clearly a liar. What does he think? We just started this job yesterday. Yeah, uh, he got a mug written on the forehead. He said straight away that the car isn't his, it's a customer's. But there's a letter in there from Lancaster City Council from the 20th of the 10th, which is about three weeks ago. And I don't know why you'd have that in there if it was a customer's car. I mean, if it's a customer's car, you take it to MOT, you bring it back. You don't jolly around in it for three weeks. The agents go to confront Mr. Fernley. Right. <laughs> I remember I took my car to this shop and they were supposed to do something to it. This back when I had my Chevy. Bro, it was supposed to take two days for them, to, one day for them to do something to my car. It took, it, day five comes. I'm hitting them up. They not responding. Oh, we have it. I pull up to the shop. Bro, my car, they crashed my car. And then had the nerves to say, oh, we'll fix it. We'll fix it. Yeah, of course you will. And then they, they pulled out a paint that was a different color than my car. And then they said, and then they said, uh, no, we're just going to paint the one spot. I'm like, no. This is not the same paint as this. You're going to paint the entire car. Okay, we, we just charge you 400 Boy, you got me... F Boy, what? You are got me conf f severely confused with a goofy. Paint my car, or I, like I was about to call my uh, insurance. And I ain't going to play with you. I'll sue y'all. This would be, be the Lit Ones Auto Salon in a minute. Keep playing. There's documentation and vehicle with your name on it, sir. Well, do you think we do this? Do you think this is the first time we, we do this job? Well, documentation with my name on it. With your in address? Box. Eh? In the glove box from Lancaster City Council with your home address on it. Yeah. It's got yeah, all right, I'll show you because that might be easier. Yeah, it's got my name on it. That's the good box, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah There's the documentation there with your details on it. Yeah. But you said you've just taken this for an MOT. Okay. Yeah, you've just taken this to MOT. Done. Universal credit. Yeah. I had to take that into council. Yeah. Which I have done to prove that I got my universal credit. Yeah. Which is what I have done. Yeah. Right. So Can you prove this vehicle is not yours? I don't have any documentation. Okay, then it will go. Period. With no proof that the car doesn't belong to the debtor, Stuart clamps it. But then Mr. Fernley makes a surprising offer. I can sell a load of gold tomorrow. Where's the gold? You used to have an antique shop. Yeah. 
The case has taken an unexpected turn. Seize it. But will Mr. Fernley's stash of gold be enough to cover the almost three and a half thousand pounds Stuart and Vic came for? Should be, looks like enough. Jonah to a Chris Athens to the. Did we do the. But then. Well, man, now Vic two needs to assess the value of the gold to see <coughs> whether it's enough to settle the debt for good. Stop, Rings. They do uh, two ninety a piece. Two hundred and ninety a piece. Yeah. Two ninety a piece. So yeah. that's three hundred. Say three hundred pounds a piece. Yeah. How many have you got? One, two, three. There. Can I have a look at it? That's gold. It's nine carat. Yeah, it's nine carat gold. Believe me. When I go weigh that in tomorrow, I'll get five for that. Five grand. Yeah. It seems that the value of the gold might cover the £3,400 Mr. Fernley owes. But no, there's a problem. Where does that have to go? The dealer in uh, Kendall. That's not but too far from here. No, it's only there on Friday. It seems Mr. Fernley can't sell the gold to the dealer until the following day. The agents could seize the gold themselves, but would prefer to be paid in cash. So what y'all gonna do? When we get offered gold, nine times out of ten, most people's eyes would light up, but at the end of the day, we'll, we would rather deal in cash than deal in gold, jewellery or anything like that, because it just puts the bill up. We've got to store it for seven days, it's then got to get sold at public auction. It might not even get the amount, depending on the prices, gold goes up and down every five minutes. Unwilling to take the gold, Vic gives Mr. Fernley one last chance to pay. 24 hours. Okay, well listen, we need a balance today. I'm leaving it with you, I'm leaving that sword with you. But then, Mr. Fernley decides to call a friend, to see whether he can raise some funds using his gold as collateral. He hasn't got money, he hasn't got anything, <coughs> and then he pulls a bag out. With, uh, it's on this, he pulls a bag out with a tray of gold rings in it. <laughs> nah, no key. This is like the third time I've seen somebody try to pay with gold on this show. Like, it was wild. Yeah, really, that's wild to me, low key. People just out here with gold. <laughs> Bizarre. It's rings, but. What's, what's happening? Okay. Is it cash? Yeah. Cash. Cash. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Fernley's friend has offered to pay the almost three and a half thousand pounds he owes today. W but friend. he needs to leave the garage to go and collect it. Do you know how long roughly you'll be, mate? Just so. We have now that half back. Not if you want to follow me. We, we can wait here. It's not going to be long. It's called ten to twelve. See you back by one o'clock. That's oh, we see you in an hour. Mr. Fernley has left the gold in his office as security. But with the agents not knowing its true value at auction, they decide to trust their professional instincts. It's very hard to trust a defendant when they say, look, I'm leaving now and I'll, I'll be back shortly. Do we trust them? Do we believe them? The main worry we've got is when a defendant disappears is, how are we going to get in contact with them again? Are we going to get this matter resolved or not? How are we going to get this issue resolved if they don't come back? I'll wait here and keep warm. 90 minutes later, Mr. Fernley still hasn't returned to the garage. Vic gets him on the phone. Mr. Fernley? Yes, are you on your way back? Bit of traffic. Right, how long are you going to be, sir? Oh, okay. Thank you. Two minutes. There he is. That's him. People like to talk. 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back, 30 minute conversation. Hello, sir. Your phone's been ringing a few times. So we've got customers waiting. Go. The agent's Rackies. gamble has paid off. Mr. Fernley has returned with enough cash to pay off his three and a half thousand pound debt in full. So there's three thousand, it's 420 here. That's your cash receipt for you. What's it regarding, Chris, anyway? 
I sold the car yeah. to somebody else, not me. Oh, Nothing right. to do with me. Yeah. I was a middleman. Yeah. Then I did the repairs on it. Yeah. Then that lemon turned around and said he didn't want it. Yeah. And he wanted money back. Yeah. So these people that were selling the car lived in Spain. Yeah. So I rings them up, said he didn't want it. He yeah. money back. Yeah. And they said, well, we're not paying. No. So, so you've been lumbered with it. The case no has been resolved. Right, we'll leave you to it. I don't believe that story. Take it easy. See you later. See you later. <sighs> That's why they call us the A-team. That's exactly right, brother. Yeah. What's the weight? Yeah. Wesley. Okay. W. Wesley, man. W mama. We knew we couldn't trust Buddy. Of course it is. <coughs> TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and